What is up guys, welcome to another episode of Maximilian Must Know. We're looking at a fragrance today that I had on my purchase list for the longest of times and that is Prada's Luna Rosa or Red Moon. And uh, Luna Rosa is also the name of Prada's sailing team, so the name does make some sense. Prada of course is what I consider to be an A1 fashion house. Uh, I saw their exhibit at the Met last year which was really fantastic. And I first started getting into Prada when I was a junior in college at about the year 2000. Uh, I really like their America's Cup shoes and their clean and light aesthetic. One of my favorite pieces of clothing of theirs is a Prada Gore-Tex light jacket that uh, I picked up at Barty's in, I think, 2007. Um, and, uh, of course, a lot of the Prada ready-to-wear pieces and active wear shoes are defined by that red stripe that you see on the bottle and box here. Um, and what really sort of always puzzled me about Prada was why they waited so long to get into the fragrance game when their Italian counterparts, Gucci and Dolce and & Gabbana, and Ferragamo and Versace were all actively producing fragrances in the 80s and 90s. And Prada was really nowhere to be found, at least in the men's market, until about five or six years ago. And uh, that puzzled me for a long time. Now, the House of Prada was started in Italy in 1913 by a gentleman named Mario Prada with his brother Martino. And it was really just a leather good and luggage store uh, named for Telly Prada in Milan. Milan, as you know, is often called the fashion capital of the world. It's amazing how many huge fashion houses like Gucci and Baton and Prada start out as just simple uh, leather and bag makers. But eventually Mario's daughter Luisa took over the company and then her daughter Miuccia took over from Luisa in 1978. And the Prada that we all know today was really shaped by her, for better or for worse. And uh, I think you get a little bit of both with them. I think they're a brilliant house. I love how they've been able to keep some street aesthetic and they're ready to wear line, but they also have very creative high fashion couture edge as well. They started developing their bags in the late 1970s, and that's sort of when their handbags became bestsellers in department stores around the world. In the mid 80s, shoes were added to the line, and then women's wear in 1988. And then in 92, Prada debuted a separate men's and women's brand called Miu Miu, which was Miuccia's nickname. They started doing men's wear in 1993 in women's wear. Um, I wasn't a huge fan of Miu Miu, but I remember seeing their pieces around. I think the line is sort of really out of uh, trend, trendiness now. I haven't seen anything from them in a long time. But on the fragrance side of things, in 2003, a set of numbered exclusive fragrances were offered at their boutiques in a few select department stores. And these scents all focused on single notes like iris, orange flower, tuberose, violet, etc. But Prada's first mass marketed scent was Eau de Parfum, which was released in 2004 for women. The first men's scent they did was in 2008, and it was called simply Infusion de Homme. That's a really masterful, clean and soapy scent, and really all of Prada's scents for men have a soapy aesthetic to them, whether it's their amber release or their vetiver scent. And the perfumer behind all these scents is a woman named Daniela Andrier. Um, she's a really good perfumer. She's done scents for Corner Barcelona, Armani, Zenia, Gucci, Guerlain, Kenzo, etc. But of course, we're talking to her today because she's created all of the Prada's men's scents. And of course, her latest creation is a sport fragrance simply titled Luna Rosa. Now, interestingly enough, while a lot of designer brands license their names out to bigger fragrance companies, Prada sort of did the same thing, but they did it with a company I was a bit surprised about. And that company is a Spanish fragrance and design house called Puig. And Puig is huge. Besides doing their own fragrances and clothing, they're also shareholders in a bunch of other houses, including Jean Paul Gaultier, uh, Comme de Garçon, Valentino, and Prada. And we'll get into Puig on another show because I really do like one of their fragrances called Quorum a lot. But Puig goes back to the early 1900s when a gentleman named Antonio Puig started the company as a fragrance and Antonio manufacturer. So they're doing Prada scents at this point and Daniela Andre is working with them on the scents. Now this scent was released in the fall of September in 2012. I think it was an exclusive to Macy's at first, but now it can be found at a major department stores and that's Sephora. 100 ml goes for $84, 50 ml for 62. I went with the 100 ml bottle. I picked mine up at Bloomingdale's. And your top notes on this fragrance are going to be lavender, absolute, and bitter orange. 
uh, clary, sage, and spearmint are your middle notes, and your base notes are going to be amber absolute and the ambroxan molecule. Now, presentation, it's a very plain box uh, that just says Luna Rosa with uh, information on the bottom. And the bottle, it does look nice, but... Um, you know, it's glass with this. It was, uh, I guess, inspired by a sailboat. And this piece here isn't metal. I think it feels like plastic. And it has a kind of awkward cap uh, that is sometimes difficult to get back on. So kind of cheap in that department. I think they could have done better here. And, uh, it's, I mean, literally, I have a hard time getting it back on now, as you can see. Uh, you have to get it just so or it won't go back down, which is such a ridiculous may way to have made this. But, um, you know, it, it is a nice looking bottle, but I think when you actually start to tinker with it, it does seem uh, cheap. And this is feel plasticky, so I don't think they did uh, a great job with that. And here's the thing with the actual fragrance. If you own other Prada fragrances, Amber Pour Home, Amber Extreme, or Infusion Day Home, uh, I own Diffusion Day Home and I really like it. It's probably one of my top 10 favorite designer scents. But if you own any of those, it's my opinion that you're going to be disappointed by Luna Rosa because to me this scent is a much lighter version of all their other scents. As I said, these men's scents from Prada have a soapy, clean DNA that I really, really liked initially. Um, I liked that I could get a, grab a product scent and expect that clean soapiness with a bit of variation. But now it's starting to bore me. And, uh, you know, it's hard. Luna Rose is an extremely light, soapy lavender scent. That's basically what it is. And if you've never smelled another product scent or a soapy scent like Mugler, Mugler Cologne or Sung Home, then you really might like this. But if you have a few of those in your collection, you're probably just going to be like, ah, you know, been there, done that. I don't pick up any of the bitter orange in this scent, very little clary sage and a dab of spearmint. I do get that ambroxan molecule and lavender dirt soapiness. And that's really it with very little evolution or change. This is a scent that stays close to your skin, so you can go wild with the sprayer, maybe hit yourself with four or five sprays. Um... And I think everyone appreciates fresh and clean, so this could be for any age. And, uh, you know, I don't want to knock it because that is a good thing, a clean scent. And it could definitely be unisex, like most of the male scents from Prada. Anyone that likes smelling clean can get away with wearing this type of scent. Um, and they also make other infusion scents, like Iris for women and Vetiver for men. And they all fit that soapy bill. So, uh, with that said, if I had never smelled another Prada scent before, I think I'd like this quite a bit. But that's, and that's how I should judge it. There's no mysteries within this scent. You're not going to pick up notes uh, that you think you will later in time. At this price point, you know, I think it's not that great. I think it's a 5 out of 10. Um, you know, maybe if I had another smell Prada, other Prada scents, it might be a little bit higher. But based on me knowing them, this isn't a bad scent, but it's not one I'll be reaching for when I want to impress or have a special occasion. It's just too boring for that. And when I do want that kind of soapy and clean scent, I will probably just reach for Infusion Day Home, which lasts longer, or Mugler Cologne. You know, this doesn't have the elegance of a Dior Home Sport, the likability of a Lana Wheat, or the quality of a Hermes scent. It's just sort of blah. And there are better ways for you to spend your money at Sephora, especially with their original Infusion Day Home, which is much better because it's a soapy scent with some good longevity and projection. And sorry if you've been disappointed with this review, but this has been a disappointing scent for me. Um, again, 5 out of 10 is the best I think you can do with this. If you don't own other product scents, I'd recommend checking it out. If you do, it might just be redundant to you. Next week, we're going to be talking about a scent probably from bond number 9. Don't hold me to it, but uh, that's what I think we're going to be doing next week. And during this week, I've been asked for a few times to do my summer starting lineup and fragrances, so that will come up during the week. That is this week's episode of Maximilian Must Know. Thank you so much for watching. In the cut, in the cut, rolling doobies